I'm trying to speak to people, young women, about if it doesn't feel okay, it's not okay, because that was never told to me. I never want to over represent things because they definitely were role models when I was a young person, but I didn't really know them. I had a, you know, some profs at university and some high school teachers, but I didn't, other than Marie Curie, I didn't really know any women science role models. And if I did know scientists, the theme that I found was that they were successful despite their womanness not either because of or independently of. My goal is to talk to people about being a scientist as the thing that you do, and then all the other parts that make you yourself, we should welcome, celebrate, and respect. Some people at various stages suggest that, that you are there because you are a woman. On some level, I think that's true. And on some level, I think that's good. When then people say to you, oh, but you're not as qualified as a guy, that gets a little bit harder. I joke that my job is to have ideas, but then to like, destroy them. And that's really important, and it's a skill we train students, and I train students all the time. This is what you do. You basically just tear everything down, and then if it survives, you build it up again. But the problem is that we then do that to each other, and there's sort of an understanding in science that that's accepted. The idea is that if I can, if I can be as aggressive, then I can show you that I'm smarter than you, because I'm basically showing you that you believed your lies, I don't believe your lies, and this is why. And so it starts to build a culture of rudeness, of interrupting, so you don't even get to tell me your whole idea because I decide I see the floor in step two and I just trash you, right? And the crazy thing is that it starts to become seen as a sign of intelligence. They shouldn't have to play by the same rules because they're so brilliant, which means you're never surprised, you're never really listening, you're always smarter than everyone else, and you rise because you're seen as this great person. Of course, it makes a terrible person to work with, right? A terrible colleague because you have to deal with that all the time. If the goal is to get more scientists in, and all I'm doing is finding the aggressive people who sometimes are wrong, it's this terrible cycle that's difficult to break. Students look at this happening and they are, they never want to speak. If that happens and you don't want to speak up, to me, it's a logical next step that if someone like that touches you inappropriately, you also can't stop because now you're the girl complaining about not even science, just the guy that's rubbing your back in a weird way. And then, you know, people say things like, oh, but you're trying to change the system by dressing in a certain way. And so if you dress in a certain way, especially around people that don't experience that, like you just should expect them to do something. So it's up to, you know, dress like someone once said to me, dress like you're going to a funeral. They were like, dress like you're going to a funeral and this stuff won't happen. It goes from that level of stuff to slightly, you know, more damaging stuff sexual harassment, you know, I've had um, quite a few instances of like profs doing things or, you know, um, colleagues doing things. And, and I think one of the reasons why it's so destructive is because the careers are tied together. So even now, if I openly was to sort of tell people the names of the people that have harassed me, they could still damage my career. And I'm a tenure track professor, right? So I totally understand people who don't want to speak up. But of course, if you don't speak up, there's nothing we can do. Someone has said this to me when they were harassing me. They said, oh, I'm just, tonight I'm just a guy. And I was like, if you can't see the power dynamic between us, you aren't just a guy. You're in a huge position of power and you have power over my career. So they, I cannot make the same choices that I could. Um, a lot of the things that I think happened I didn't recognize initially, or I thought they were more, more my fault, as opposed to someone saying like, no, no one does that, that, that shouldn't be happening. And so we're in this terrible catch-22 of victims that, that have intense pressure to say nothing, universities and institutions that support harassers openly, blatantly, and I just think we create a culture that prioritizes brilliance over humanity, and I am tired of that. My name is Renee Lajek, and I'm an assistant professor at the Department of Astronomy and Astrophysics and the Dunlap Institute. To hear the full-length interview this video was based on, check out our podcast at patreon.com/thoughtcafe. And be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next video.